Welcome back. Kathy, in 2009, you received an award. What was that about? Uh, that was the Order of Australia Medal. Uh, it was about, I belong to lots of other women's organisations and I, you don't get told that somebody's nominating you for these awards. So it was to my surprise that I'd even had it in Order of Australia Medal because I didn't really know what it was. But to my surprise, this one woman had understood the depth of my work and so it was through that that I was able to get the Order of Australia Medal. And I encourage other people to nominate other women that are doing inspiring things as well to, to be able to bring out some of their stories and give them a platform. Exactly. Congratulations. And you also mentioned that your husband went through some difficult times himself. Well, he had to pick up the pieces. We had three teenage children. He had to pick up the pieces of the family and work and his wife that had this condition that we didn't really understand and I had six weeks radiation. What well, must be really hard on a man to say, well, look, you know, I can take care of this family when if they don't have that understanding either, it's twice as much a challenge for the men as it is for the women. So there's a lot of work to be done with relationships, and the mental health and the gynaecological health and it's almost too big but I mean I love it and believe in it so much that I will just keep going and some people think I'm a bit over the top but <laughs> it's a very important issue absolutely yes, yes. Mm. Yeah. So is there any support for men at the moment? Or? I mean there's mental health issues and the men can turn to the mental health but I noticed during mental health week there was a direct link for men, teenagers and children and gay and lesbian women but there's not a direct link for women with depression in Australia and I questioned with a professor on the East Coast who does research for women and she said there is no direct link. I thought, how can that be? Shocking. But we don't question, you see. And probably things have changed a little bit now, but unless we question, nothing's going to change. And, you know, we're like good girls that we just do as we're told. Well, I'm not one of those girls, <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> good girls rarely do what they're told. <laughs> That's right. But I've been asked to speak at a private girls' school um, with the 100 um, private 15 year old girls. Uh, on sexual health yes. and I'm a life member of the WA Sexology Association but I'm finding it a challenge how I'm going to be speaking to 15 year old girls on this topic but I'm, I'm working that the, the undies is yeah. a great way to sort of think well I'm not going to be here talking about scary things and, and I have to put some humour into it. It's very true and yeah. you know just calling a sped a sped not a big spoon yeah. you know it, it does help. <laughs> You know, you say what it is, and yeah, um, yeah and the, the the props that you you've brought here, I think mm. that's a very good um, opening piece for yes. yeah. And here's another prop that I'd like to share as well. It doesn't yes. cost a lot of money. But <laughs> you just get some wire and you just twist it around. This is the ovaries, and this yes. is the the uterus and the cervix, and this is the vagina here. There's no vulva here, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, but at least it's yes. it's something that doesn't cost money, but it's still simple and easy for us to get the message out. Exactly. So with the women, uh, I know you'll be speaking, um, I think it's, it's in Bunbury? Yes, and they're doing the Moulin Rouge theme. And to me, that is exciting because up until now it's always been, you know, when you celebrate the Ghani Day, but King Edward Hospital for women in Perth have celebrated the Ghani Day for the last five years. And that is the day that you started yourself, yes, isn't it? Yeah. Right. That's yeah. right, and the city of Perth lit up their building purple for the Ghani Day last year, so it's like, yeah, you know, somebody's listening, but it's still a challenge to be able to get the whole world to come in and understand the, the, uh, the need for this sort of thing. So, yeah. so with the Ghani Day, when is that? It is the 10th of September and it just happens to be my birthday. Oh, wow, congratulations. But I want to tell you how it came about because when I had all these ladies' letters, um, I thought, what am I supposed to do with these? Because the powers that be would say, well, you can't do this. And so they, um, so I rang the Senator Amanda Vanstone's office in Canberra. What am I supposed to do about this? Nothing's happening. And they said, well, have a national day. And I said, but how do you do that? She said, well, you just declare it. So I've now declared an International Gynaecological Awareness Day. And for those that don't approve of it, well, they'll just have to catch up because <laughs> I'm not, I don't have time to waste here. And so exactly. I've just got to you know, keep going and just look for people like you who are helping me to get the message out. So with your work, are you working with gynaecologists and doctors and other service providers in order to get the message out to the community? Uh, oh yes, I've, 
I have had, I did have a not-for-profit and I worked with a lot of the, uh, the gynaecologists and the doctors and, but at this point in time I'm a solo agent and I'm setting up a charitable trust so that I can try and find ways to get the corporates to open the doors to this. It's really hard for, and somebody said because the males are mostly in the, at the helm of that, yes. there is a lot of resistance there, but I wouldn't agree with that. I, I think that if the women still have so much stigma and barriers around that, and when we're strong enough and when we have a voice strong enough, we can it, we work together with the men at the top to say, look, this is really important for, for men and women, so, exactly. yeah. And to the women out there, you know, like there will be women who are watching this show and they might be going through some tough times, uh, what advice would you give to them? Well, I would suggest you go to the women's health centres. They have women's health centres all around the world. Reach out to your mothers or your aunties and, and share with them and just make sure if, because if, I actually went to several doctors before my diagnosis and so therefore if you, you don't feel something's right well then you question and you question and you question again until you feel satisfied because quite often female intuition is a very strong thing so just take action. And you mentioned that you know there's a lot of uh, stigma attached to these women's issues. Yes. I think maybe we're not talking about it enough. Why do you think that's the case? Well, it wasn't until I discovered that I, I was questioning, questioning why this is so. I would go to the women's organisations and there still wasn't anything on the agenda. And I thought, why is it like this? And then I discovered the word pudendum in the dictionary. And the Latin version of that word says, female genitalia, one who should and ought to be ashamed, the shameful part of a woman. And so that gave me some understanding as to why thousands of years ago we were progress, socially programmed that we don't talk about these things. But I don't think men, there would be a, a word in the dictionary for men to be ashamed of their genitalia. And so I then noticed that women call their vulva a vagina. By the way, the vulva is the external genitalia and the vagina is the internal genitalia. And then I discovered that women are confused, even in this day and age, which bit is which, and they're still talking behind their hands. And I'm saying, well, let's open the door and let's start talking about these things. It, because a, a lot of issues are connected with pornography in this day and age, and I'm coming from the direct reverse of that. It's like, hey, women, yes. be proud yeah. of who and what you are. Exactly, because this is a health issue, and it's, you, like you're saying, it's affecting a lot of women out there, mm. and not much education about it. Mm. So what's missing in our education system? Well, I think, it's, I think it's the women themselves. I think we need to have a good hard look at why this, is, why this is not being addressed and put it on the agenda of the United Nations Women's Organisations. Let's start talking about these things. And I know a lot of this work is under the umbrella of reproductive health. But to me, gynaecological health is just as different as a vulva is to a vagina. And reproductive health is about having babies. And gynaecology is about the millions of women with gynaecological health issues. And how this also affects the men and the fathers and the husbands in these women's lives. It has a huge effect on relationships and mental health. And yet, quite often, even the mental health issue, people do not see the connection between here and here for women and depression, which I sort of think, but why? Well, it is very true because, you know, if somebody's going through something that is, you know, as sensitive and then there's the stigma attached to it, mm -hmm. and then the society is not allowing you to talk about it, of course mm -hmm. somebody's going to be depressed in yes. going through such uh, challenging and difficult times. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the key steps that women can take to look after themselves? Because like you're saying, there's not enough information out there, there's not enough education and often women they leave it until they go and see their GP yes. and then find out oh it's too late. Yes, that's, yeah. right. that's yeah. right. But quite often I don't think because we as women don't create a lot of attention around this area, a lot of the GPs are not given enough time to have an understanding themselves. So this is not just about the women and the men learning, but it's also being able to find the funding to support these, these doctors and gynaecologists. Yeah. Wow, wonderful, thank you. So um, the last question, what are you reading and why? Well, at the moment I'm reading a book on, on sexual health for young girls. Yes. And she's very out there with it. And she doesn't say, you know, women's health is 
is fun. She's really to the point where, you know, sometimes it's not very nice, but there's other times when, you know, and it's teaching her how to deal, how young boys and young girls deal together with sexual health issues. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's, I have to learn before I speak to these young girls, I have to learn about young girls and young boys and how to bring it together. So that's my challenge at the moment. But I do have a writer that's helping me with that. So hopefully I'll be able to, to nail it right. I'm sure you will. I'm <laughs> sure you will. Well, thank you very much for this inspiring conversation. That's all right. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. I learned so much from it and I hope you look after your health. Thank you and see you next week. My name is Nkandu Belts.